Hey everybody, welcome back to Nuvidian's channel and in the spirit of Easter we're not hunting for eggs, well we might do later, but now we're hunting for composables. Here come some view use composables you might not know already, but they're cool. Here we go. Before we start though, and just in case you don't know view use out there yet, let's have a quick look what it is. Because chances are you might already know or use it in the project because it's a huge collection of view composition utilities. So mostly composables, but not only, also a lot of integration. So if we have a look, for example, at the Get Started Guide, and here on the left we have core functionalities, also add-ons like integration with Electron, yeah, Use Hat is also part of it, Math, Motion, like tons of tons of things that you have like opt-in, but of course a lot of things that come straight out of the box. And the best part, I've mentioned that in various resources, the best practice is part of how to write a good composable. I would recommend everybody to read through that because this is a great guideline on how you can improve your composables that you might write yourself in your own application. Because, well, these composables written by these guidelines are used by tons of people out there. And um, yeah, there is no reason to not at least have a look and see what you can adapt. And if you're worried, oh, yet another library, I know, NPM fatigue, and so on, so on. But honestly, pick the functions that you need. Don't reinvent the wheels because these are not only, well, tested and battle proven because so many people use them. No, they also have a nice demo attached or open source. And well, the whole library is tree shakeable. So don't worry about that. You only use what you import. But now let's come to the composables because we have seven and um, time is running. So let's get to the first one. The first composable I want to share with you is Sync Refs. It is a mere 185 bytes in export size. Yeah, it's super small. And there's also another composable called Sync Ref, which is doing quite similar. It's a bit bigger, but nevertheless. So what is the idea here? Well, let's say you have refs and you just want to sync them. That's all. So you have a source, let's say this, and if I paste something in here like A, B, C, this is a test. It will be synced straight away, not between these input fields, well as well, because of the vModel. No, if we take a look at the source code and the usage, they're actually synced through the refs. So this is pretty amazing, especially because you can have multiple targets. And in a lot of scenarios, you have this case where, well, you have these side effects. You want to say, oh, I have a different ref I want to set to the same value. Well, now you can easily do it. And once again, it's battle proven, tested, and it also has some reactivity caveats worked out you might have trouble with. But that's for next week, actually. From SyncRef to another composable. This time it's a bit bigger. It's almost a kilobyte, well, a bit more than that even. It's called Use Ref History. So this is a very interesting one because obviously refs are great, right? We have reactivity, but sometimes you want to have a history of them. So saying, okay, we have a value here, no problem. Let's um, increment the count to one, two, and go back. Great. We have some history here and it's also limited so at some point the values will be replaced in the demo you can do whatever you want here but that's not all we have not only increment and decrement we also have these buttons here undo and redo so we basically have a whole little state management built into this one composable and well we all know our users right oh we do some changes or we want to revert them Especially for more complex applications, this is a real blessing. Because if you've ever implemented Undo and Redo yourself, plus the history, it's not that trivial, right? I mean, still could be a great exercise. Maybe we could do it together. If you're interested, write in the comments if, well, we should look into the internals of this. But yeah, use ref history, a great use case for a lot of scenarios. Let's dive a bit deeper. The usage itself is pretty simple. You have a ref or shallow ref, both work of course, and then you just pass it in and then you get the history under and redo out of the box. What's happening under the hood? Well, if we would dive in deeper and if you're interested, we can look into that. Watch is used and then you have a history point whenever the value is modified. So that's pretty great. Also, of course, you could just call undo to reset the point to last history point. Straightforward. There's also one more thing that's being thought of. Well, it's almost everything here, right? If you have a nested data structure and also want to make sure that the history is created when things change in objects of objects. So in deeper level, then you can set deep to true to make sure, okay, no problem. I need that. We can definitely track that if the object of an object and their value changes, no issue. But please keep in mind the performance implications, especially with huge data, because, well, someone has to track that and that someone is something, which is your browser. 
So make sure that you keep it reasonable, right? There are also some more customizations possible, like how to clone it possibly, because, well, the minimal one is obviously just JSON parse and stringify, but obviously you can do more, like using structure clone, which is almost default nowadays in browsers, or Lodish clone deep, or clona, things that are faster, defu, and so on, so on. There are tons of options, and luckily, use ref history gives you the option to that. So we see here a great example, not only of a useful composable, but also a customizable one, which means that whatever we need, it's either there, or at least there's an option to achieve that, like with the custom clone function. If we need, I don't know, more speed, for example, or different ways, no problem. Same applies, of course, to the dump and parse function to say, okay, we want to maybe strip some things out or revive them differently. So that's great. And of course, as we know, a built-in capacity, we've seen it for the demo, is already there. We can also clear that, so that's great. And then we get more into the depth of like, okay, how does flush timing work? But also, that's something I don't want to bore you with. Actually, I do, but that's for next week. Let's continue with the next composable. The next composable are actually two. Yeah, I wanted to sneak one more in just for you out there. And the first one here is called whenever. It's really not too crazy because it just does what it says it does. Whenever something happens, then execute a function. So it's basically just an equivalent of a watcher that says, oh, if the value is truthy, then do something. Sounds pretty boring, but it's actually pretty, pretty descriptive. So you don't have to write, well, three, four lines of code. You can just say, whenever this value is truthy, do something. I'm personally a big fan of more declarative code. So if you can save some lines, plus realistically, don't you think it just reads better, like more natural like that? And what does it cost? Well actually almost nothing to, to add. We can check the size again. And with almost nothing, I mean 173 bytes. I mean, probably most components are bigger than that. And similar to watch, we can also pass in the callback function, of course, to say, okay, we get the current and the last value. We can also have a getter function, of course, and options. So these are the same as watch. Well, of course, if it's just a shorthand for this here, it would be good if it's similar. Straightforward. But what's the other one? Well, Maybe some of you know it already. It is until. So that one is not exactly the opposite, but it still goes into the same lines. And this is pretty interesting. For itself, it sounds like do something until something is reached, but we don't do the demo first. We take a look at the code and just say, await until is ready to be true. It looks a bit like a test, right? Or until counts to match v, v greater than seven. And then something happens. That's super interesting. So if you see the demo, nothing happens until, ha, huh, we got seven, it's reached, and that's it. So it's really a one-off thing, watches for, watching for changes, and it's promised as well. So that's why the until keyword is here. So we have to use it with await, we can use invoke to actually call it async function, then do whatever you want. Or, well, you can do also a simple thing like a timeout to say, okay, await until ref to be true, giving it a timeout, and say either it is changed until then, or they are it's the second or whatever you pass in here past, which is pretty, pretty nifty. You can even throw on a timeout if you want to. And as we've seen before, yes, that expression looks a bit like testing. It once again looks very descriptive. It might not come supernatural to you if you read it straight away, because it seems like I said before, oh yeah, we're in a vtest file. This is not exactly correct. But as soon as you get used to it, well, you don't want to live without it. If you have like these one-off watching thingies, right? With like, okay, I want to wait until something happens and actually also wait, right? It's, it's promised. So definitely check that out if you have some cases. If you have some in mind, you know where to put them. I'm curious. All right, four more composables to go. So we are all kind of at half time, right? We did four already. I sneaked one more in, so I guess that's fine. Let's go to the next one. And now we have a look at use scroll lock. So this already gives away what it is, right? You can just lock the scrolling of an element. That's especially useful if you have some kind of modal and say, hey, you know what? If the modal is open, there, are, there is no overflow. You can't scroll in any direction. So why do you want that? Well, obviously, so maybe the modal itself has some kind of overflow and then you want to have like scroll bar and scroll bar, horrible, right? Plus the user should feel like, okay, this is a full screen modal, maybe with some backdrop, there should nothing be happening. You should even have a focus trap. Well, with the focus trap, this composable at least won't help, but with locking the position in and removing all the overflows, so no scrolling, use scroll lock is the way to go. And 
that's kind of it. We have some usage example where you can pass in a template ref or the window or document, of course, if it should be for the whole thing, and then just setting the value. But interestingly, then this composable can also be used as a directive, right? This is provided through the Vue's components package, if you're interested in that. I personally try not to use directives that much, but it could be more declarative, actually. So give it a try if you think so. And while maybe still thinking about it, we should type something because that's related to our next composable. That's called on start typing. So this is pretty interesting. We let's just select this text here, right? And I just push a button. Boom. It is straight away focusing this field here and we can type. So whenever you start, it will just autofocus this field. But interestingly, of course, not when you're in another input field. That would be horrible, right? <laughs> then only the field up here would be usable. So that's not the case at all. No, no. It's just if you focus non-edible elements and start typing on them, then you jump into that field. This is like a really nice QL part for a lot of well, forums, dashboards, and so on, where you just say, hey, the search. It's such a great case that if you start typing randomly and don't have any shortcuts, right, you maybe want to use the search instead. Why not just straight away say on start typing? Well, move it over to the search, and there we go. It's fairly small composable and worth trying to just bring your users a bit more quality of life. Of course, it's important to mention that you can actually do anything on the on start typing part. You don't have to say, oh yeah, let's focus that input and do something. You can do anything you want, right? So that's fully up to you, but that's a common use case, one could say. Okay, let's jump to the second to last composable, which is, well, one of the composables I've implemented so many times. On click outside. Yes. This is actually the case if we have a modal and say, okay, we want to have any click outside to actually close it, that will just work. And same with drop downs. And if you wonder, well, look, this is not that tricky to implement. Well, yes, but do you really want to do it yourself and then realize, oh, I can't close the menu anymore because, well, it doesn't work? Probably not. And once again, these are composables, so they're also taking anything regarding reactive values. So that might be interesting. Let's take a look at the usage. Well, the usage is pretty simple, right? We pass on a target, once again, can be a template ref, and then we do whatever is happening here. So whenever there isn't a click outside, we can do whatever we want. We can, for example, close a modal or drop down or trigger a side effect. That's great. Plus, we even have the option to say trigger or cancel and have quite some other controls options. That's also a common pattern that, hey, if you want more controls, here are some uh, opportunities to give you them. So whenever you want to, you can even say, hey, let's cancel the whole thing whenever the, the pointer moves or even trigger an on-click outside. Nevertheless, that means you can even use the composable when you have more advanced use cases that are not just like, okay, I click here and that's that. Great. Plus it's also available as a component. So we've seen directives before. Now we also see components and it's also available as a directive, of course. So also there, that's an option if you're interested in that. All right, and here it comes, the very last composable that we hunt down here for Easter. Well, hunt down so you can use it, right? The last hidden egg. And it might not be as climactic as you might think, but yes, that's the case. Use now. Yeah, use now. I'm not kidding. It's great. You have the current date. It's reactive. You even have controls if you wanted to say, hey, Let's not increment it, let's pause it or continue. And then of course you can format it, you can do whatever you want with that. Now, to be fair, there are a lot of other great date related composables in views, but I think that's one of the neatest. So for example, use time ago, we could say, okay, let's just say this was last year, two years ago, in three years or whatsoever. So just having it fully reactive. And of course you could also just pass that in and use it with an actual reactive thing like use now. So you can combine these. Keep in mind, if you don't need reactivity, well, you don't need to use a composable and just use the helper that's under the hood. And by the way, that's in general a great tip. If you don't use reactivity, then don't use it. You don't need it, so just don't do it. Which also means you don't have to use composables in this case, which is great. But back to that, I will give you one more because, well, that's a great fit. And this one is use last changed. It's pretty simple. It will basically say, okay, just give a timestamp. So we had the history in the beginning and now we end with a timestamp. Whenever something changed, here we have it. Just now, possibly, or a couple of minutes ago. We don't know. So in this case, you can just say, give it a ref 
Then we have that last change. Whenever we change the ref, it's not bound to the input. That will happen. And then here we go. Okay, and these were the composables. Uh, I plan to do seven. Now we are almost 10, I suppose. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what is your favorite composable out there from your use? What, um, yeah, what, what do you prefer and why, most likely? And I'm curious, why exactly is it create shared composable or create usable template? No, I'm kidding. But drop it down below and also take a look at the latest DGV episode where Michael and I talk with the Jared Walcott about testing in Vue.js because, well, we all should write tests. So, yeah, have a few relaxing holidays if you celebrate and have holidays. Otherwise, well, keep watching. What do you mean otherwise? Keep watching, come on. And happy Easter. Um, happy hacking.